Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is systemic or invasive fungal infections. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, coccidiomycosis, paracoccidiomycosis, cryptococcosis, systemic candid candidosis, and mucormycosis. Systemic mycosis are the fungal infections that involve deep structures and that have the propensity to disseminate, usually via bloodstream from the original focus of infection. They include mainly the two group of diseases, the endemic mycosis and the opportunistic systemic mycosis. Pathophysiology. The endemic mycoses are usually acquired via inhalation of the causative organism. They are therefore have a common mode of pathogenesis. These mycoses have defined areas of endemicity, which may have characteristic climate or flora and fauna. The main endemic mycoses are histoplasmosis, which is classical and African type, the blastomycosis, coccidiomycosis, paracoccidiomycosis, an infection which is caused by teleromycosis, myotelleromyces, previously the penicillium. The clinical manifestations of these infections are affected by the underlying state of the patient, and many of them develop in presence of particular immunodeficiency <laughs> state, notably AIDS. But since these are endemic mycoses, they are not related to the immunodeficiency conditions. The opportunistic systemic mycoses are those systemic infections that only occur in patients with some underlying predisposition. In contrast to the endemic mycoses, they may occur in any geographic areas and their clinical manifestations are very variable depending upon the predisposition and mode of entry of the fungus. Cryptococcosis share features of both endemic mycosis and opportunistic infections. However, as it can affect healthy and is a primary respiratory infection caused by a fungus that occupies a specific ecological niche it will be considered here for with the endemic infections, although many of the cryptococcuses we see now associated with AIDS. The first infection we are going to discuss today is histoplasmosis. So the histoplasmosis is a highly infectious mycosis that is caused by a diamorphic fungus, histoplasma capsulatum, and affect primarily the lungs, where it is generally asymptomatic. The fungus is intracellular, parasitizing the reticuloendothelial system and involves spleen, liver, kidney, CNS, and other organs. Rarely, the disease may become chronic, progressive, and fatal. Previously, two varieties of fungus were differentiated. Histoplasma var capsulatum or a closely related histoplasma var dubosi. They show some subtle antigenic differences, but their mycelial phase is identical. Epidemiology. The disease caused by histoplasma capsulatum var capsulatum <coughs> or strong, small form capsule histoplasmosis is widely distributed throughout the world, occurring in some 60 temperate and tropical countries in America, Africa, and Australia, uh, Australasia. Infections with Dubosi form is known as African histoplasmosis or large form histoplasmosis is reported mainly from Africa. Infants and children are frequently infected. Rate is highest in male agriculture workers, and there is no ethnic predisposition. Associated disease. 
Lymphoma appeared to favor the development of infection. In addition, histoplasmosis is an important complication of AIDS. Pathophysiology. Histoplasmosis is normally a pulmonary infection which may spread through the bloodstream to affect other sites. Rarely, the organism can be introduced by direct inoculation, usually as a result of laboratory accident to cause a local lesion with involvement of regional lymph nodes. This is called as the primary cutaneous disease. The causative organism. Histoplasma capsulatum exists as a saprophyte in nature and has often be, been isolated from the soil, particularly when contaminated with chicken feathers or droppings. The disease is not transmitted from human to human or from animal to human, but by inhalation of airborne conidia. Epidemics have occurred from time to time among the people exposed to spore-charged atmosphere, an infection may follow the introduction of spores through the skin and mucous membranes, such as in laboratory workers. Genetics, there is no known genetic predisposition. This is the histopathological appearance. The small yeast form, you can see here, are intracellular and consist of small basophilic particle that is surrounded by a clear halo. It is differentiated from leishmania by use of methamine, silver, or PAS staining. And uh, the E cell have very thick wall and nuclei are usually single intranuclear within the giant cells and histocytes. The methamine silver highlights this um, parasite. Clinical features. The benign form of the disease, which heal by calcification, is indistinguishable on X-ray from tuberculosis. Spectrum of disease range from asymptomatic, symptomatic, and benign infections to progressive, disseminated variety with blood spread to all organs. All the varieties are reminiscent of tuberculosis. Skin lesions are more often with Dubosi than with capsulatum, and skin is rarely affected in histoplasmosis except in AIDS, and often involved in African histoplasmosis. Most skin arise following dissemination from primary pulmonary focus, and the skin lesions include papule, nodule, granulomas, abscess ulceration, fistula, scars, and pigmentary changes. There may be secondary involvement of the skin with osteomyelitis. Asymptomatic forms of histoplasmosis indicated by the presence of positive skin test reactivity without evidence of infection is common in endemic areas. So this picture shows the disseminated disease in skin lesions are in a form of innumerable small papules, nodules, and coalescing plants. Clinical variants. There are four main and one rare clinical variety of histoplasmosis. The common type of histoplasmosis are the acute pulmonary histoplasmosis. Patient has usual symptoms of acute infection of the lungs. An X-ray examination of chest reveal diffuse mottled and localized infiltration. A great majority of people in endemic areas who have shown reaction to histoplasmin testing have acquired their infection by a pulmonary route without developing recognizable signs and symptoms. Even in such cases, organism is not limited to lung, but is disseminated throughout all parts of reticuloendothelial system. There can be associated erythema multiforme and erythema nodosum. Then the acute disseminated form. Relatively uncommon, lungs may be consolidated as a part of inhalation of many spores. Pulmonary signs are prominent. In addition, there is enlargement of liver, 
spleen with fever anemia loss of appetite and generalized enlargement of lymph glands the pulmonary manifestation simulate miliary tuberculosis there is progressive emaciation in, induced by gastrointestinal involvement that contributes to the fatal outcome after course of weeks or months cutaneous or mucocutaneous granulomas are often seen in association with disseminated disease this is a form seen in patient with aids and in aids patient with multiple skin nodules may develop central softening common sites are mouth nose and larynx then chronic pulmonary histoplasmosis usually occur in adults and closely resemble chronic pulmonary tuberculosis then chronic disseminated form this may appear months or years after the patient has left an endemic area and the most common clinical presenting feature are oral ulcers and addison's disease that is caused by adrenal infiltration mouth ulcers are large and may be chronic there is laryngeal involvement ulceration or granuloma formation may also occur the primary cutaneous histoplasmosis is the rare variety and appears after inoculation of organism into the skin and the primary lesion is a nodule or indurated ulcer with local lymph adenopathy african histoplasmosis the skin lesions range from small papules resembling molluscum contagiosum to large abscesses or ulcers it is usual to screen patients with a bone scan or x-ray to exclude bone foci the course of disease is usually chronic and some patients appear to develop more rapidly progressive disseminated type of infection diagnosis is confirmed by microscopy direct or histopathology and culture serology using conventional test is often negative in african histoplasmosis differential diagnosis include systemic mycosis such as telluromycosis telluromyces and cryptococcus and the skin lesions resemble molluscum contagiosa investigations diagnosis of histoplasmosis is established by identifying a small intracellular yeast 2 to 5 micrometer in septum peripheral blood in sputum peripheral blood bone marrow or biopsy specimen lymph node aspiration may also be employed then identity identity of organism should be confirmed by culture some workers consider a culture should be maintained for up to 12 weeks before reporting it as negative then serology serological test the intradermal histoplasmin skin test is an epidemiological tool that is of no help in diagnosis because it is negative in many patients with disseminated histoplasmosis a rising complement fixation titer indicates dissemination management all forms of histoplasmosis require antifungal drugs although in some acute forms of pulmonary histoplasmosis there is spontaneous recovery without treatment for many disseminated or localized form of disease oral itraconazole is highly effective it appears in eight patients use of heart may reduce the requirement of maintenance therapy posaconazole and fluconazole are alternatives amphotericin b is useful and used in those with widespread and severe infections in african histoplasmosis itraconazole or ketoconazole are effective an alternate is streptomycin b amphotericin b some patients with solitary skin lesions may simply respond to excision without chemotherapy although antifungal should be given where possible now the second disease we are going to discuss is blastomycosis blastomycosis is a chronic granulomatous and suppurative mycosis that is caused by blastomyces dermatitis 
It affects primarily the lungs, but disseminating forms also occur and skin, bone, CNS and other sites are involved. Epidemiology. The condition is originally thought to be restricted to Northern America. However, now known to be widely distributed in Africa with largest number of cases coming from Zimbabwe and cases have also been reported from Middle East, India and Poland. The incidence of infection tend to be highest in rural areas and in agriculture workers. Human-human transmission does not normally take place and fungus has also been recovered from domestic animals like dogs. Adult males are most commonly affected, the majority being at the age of 30 to 50 years. Blastomycosis is not common in patients with HIV or AIDS. Pathophysiology. Blastomyces dermatitis is found in wood debris or soil close to the rivers or subject to flooding. The fungus can grow in the sterile soil in the laboratory and it is believed then humans are infected by inhalation of spores from a saprophytic source. Primary lesion is usually pulmonary, sometimes cutaneous, and develop one to three weeks after infections and is associated with regional lymph adenopathy. Primary skin lesion also occur, particularly in laboratory workers or the pathologists. Blastomycosis is an infection that can otherwise that can affect otherwise healthy individuals as well as immunosuppressed. On histopathology, there is pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia and intense dermal inflammation. So the fungus is an intra there is an intraepidermal abscess. Multiple intraepidermal abscesses are present with granulomatous inflammation and giant cells. The blastomyces is a large yeast form with a thick cell wall within a multinucleated giant cell as shown by the arrow. There, there is broad based budding, which is seen within the cell. So on methamine silver, the cell wall is stained and the fungal yeast are more obvious. Clinical features. Source of exposure is not yet known, and there is no known incubation period. There are three forms of blastomycosis, primary cutaneous, pulmonary, and disseminated. The primary cutaneous blastomycosis is very rare, follow trauma to the skin and introduction of fungus, and the condition is mainly seen in laboratory workers like pathologists. After inoculation, an erythematous, indurated area with chancre appear one to two in one to two weeks with it associated with lymphangitis and lymph adenopathy. There may be some constitutional reaction and there is strong tendency towards subcutaneous recovery. Here you can note numerous ulcerated and crusted nodules on the chest and patient has systemic involvement. There is severe facial involvement and note the scarring and the serpiginous border. The pulmonary blastomycosis. It is very similar to pulmonary tuberculosis or histoplasmosis. There may be no symptoms or there may be low grade fever, chest pain, cough and hemoptysis. Occasionally erythema nodosum develops. There may be cavity formation with lung abscesses. And in most cases, other organs are also affected. The disease, if untreated, may frequently disseminate and often progress to death. The third form is disseminated blastomycosis. Here, infection is spread from the chest and lesions develop in many organs, primarily skin, bone, and CNS. Mucous membranes are rarely involved. One or many, many skin lesions may be present and they are often symmetrical on the trunk rather than on exposed parts. Lesions may be papules or nodule that ulcerate and discharge pus. The lesions enlarge at the periphery and tend to show central scarring as I have shown you in the previous picture. 
After relent, uh, relentless progress for months, the border are raised and warty and have bilicious margin studded with millary abscesses containing the organism. This is what I am trying to highlight. African patients with blastomycosis have higher frequency of skin and bone involvement. Differential diagnosis. The microabscesses are distinctive, but the chronic granulomas of skin must be differentiated from TB, syphilis, leprosy, pyoderma ganginosum, and drug reactions resulting from bromides or iodides. Pulmonary regions, which are invariably present, necessitate the X-ray examination of chest and differentiation for tuberculosis and other infections and neoplasias. The diagnosis of skin lesions is established by direct microscopy of the pus in 10% potassium hydroxide and confirmed by culture or biopsy. Investigation. Fungus can be observed in KOH mount or of pus scraping as rather thick walled rounded refractile spherical yeast with broad base buds. Tissue sections must be scanned carefully to identify the organisms. Disseminated skin lesions may take form of abscesses with organisms in their wall or with giant cells and non-specific granulomatous infiltrate. Management. All variants of the disease require treatment. First line treatment in most cases itraconazole uh, and has the advantage that it can be given orally. The best regimen is not clear, but at least 400 milligrams should be given initially. Second line is amphotericin B, which is still used for treatment of widespread disseminated form of blastomycosis. Ketoconazole is an alternate. The third disease I am going to discuss today is coccidiodomycosis. This is primary respiratory fungal infection caused by coccidiodes imitis and coccidiodes posidesi, which may become progressive and disseminate with severe fatal forms. It's endemic in desert areas of southwestern state of USA and in parts of Central and South America. The climate is characterized by high mean January and July temperatures and annual rainfall around 12 to 50 centimeter. Human infections may develop from a very short residence or visit to an endemic area. A skin test have shown that incidence in endemic areas is as high as 95%. In, it is widespread and important disease only within this region. It affects any age and there is higher risk of dissemination in pregnant women, higher risk of dissemination in, from Latin or Native Americans and African American backgrounds. Pathophysiology. The fungus is a soil inhabitant. Infection of human are wide variety of um, in, uh, human and wide variety of domestic and wild animal is acquired by inhalation of fungus laden dust particles. The control of dust therefore becomes important in prevention of the disease. The inhaled spores, arthroconidia of the saprophytic mycelial phase develop in the lung tissue to form spherule, which are large round endospore containing structure, which when mature are usually 30 to 80 micrometer in diameter. Between second and six week after exposure, patient becomes sensitive to intradermal test using fungal antigen, the coccidiodin. The primary lesion is associated with regional lymphadenopathy, but usually there is no further spread. If secondary dissemination occur, granulomatous lesions with giant cells and epithelioid cells are produced. So epidermis like blastomycosis shows pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia and dermis 
again is associated with suppurative granulomatous inflammation. Numerous giant cells are present and spherules are present within the giant cells. And this spherule can be highlighted by special fungal stain like PS or silver impregnation stains. This is high power view of the spherule or sporangia. The severity of coxidiodomycosis varies from mild in, uh, in apparent upper respiratory tract infection to acute disseminated fatal disease. The common primary pulmonary form is asymptomatic and simulate influenza or occasionally pulmonary TB. EM or erythema nodosum occur from three to seven weeks in some three to 25% of the patients. And there is accompanying uveitis and arthralgia. The pulmonary symptoms include pleurisy, <laughs> acute shortness of breath, cuff and pyrexia, an early generalized macular erythematous rash is seen in 10% of the patients. The exceedingly rare primary skin lesion is painless firm, indurated nodule, occurring one to three weeks after local trauma with regional lymphadenopathy, but spontaneous healing occur after a few weeks. Coxidiodomycosis is characterized by papillonodular, papillopustular or subcutaneous masses and there is crusted plaque on the arm. Then disseminated coxidiomycosis is very uncommon and develop in fewer than 0.5% of the infected individuals and usually in black, uh, Filipino and immunosuppressed patients. It develops rapidly by blood spread of endospores to all organs or insidious, in, insidiously from pulmonary lesions after a period of cuisance. The death rate in acute disseminated disease or with meningitis is very high and disseminated lesions occur in skin, subcutaneous tissue, bone, joint and all other organs. The skin lesions like I have shown appear as abscess, granulomas, ulcers, discharging sinus and then there is involvement of underlying bone and joints. Prolonged progressive pulmonary infection also occur in AIDS patients. Disease course and prognosis. Prognosis of primary form is excellent. Untreated acute disseminated forms are fatal. Investigation, usually large 3 to 80 micrometer or large globular spherules are seen in QOH mount of the sputum, CSF or pus. Confirmation depends on the isolation of fungus in culture. Management, there is no specific therapy apart from rest in pulmonary infection primary. Usually oral azoles like itraconazole in patient with erythema nodosum is helpful in reducing the symptoms and it may aggravate the situation. For disseminated disease, the approach depends upon the form of disease. First line is oral itraconazole 200 to 400 milligram daily or fluconazole 400 to 800 milligram daily and are effective in localized infections, such as solitary disseminated skin lesions and the duration depending on the clinical response. Second line, there is insufficient evidence on the effective dose of voriconazole or posaconazole. Intravenous amphotericin B, one milligram per kg per day or liposomal amphotericin B, 3 mg per kg per day is used in severe disease and uh, 2 and 4 weeks. The most difficult complications are meningitis and joint infection. Then the fourth disease which is going to be discussed today is paracoxidiodomycosis. It's a chronic granulomatous fungal infection caused by paracoxidiodes brasiliensis affecting skin, mucous membrane, lymph nodes, and internal organs. And the infection is again reported in Latin American countries and most commonly in Brazil, Colombia, and Argentina. 
the infection is not known to occur in other continents and disease is not transmitted directly from person to person and is more frequent in rural areas it is rare in children and adult males between 20 to 50 years are most frequently affected it is thought that fungus occur as saprophyte or vegetation or in soil the infection is likely to gain entry from inhalation via the respiratory tract and susceptibility to paracoxidiromycosis brasiliensis is related to hla a9 and the antigen has been found more frequently in progressive pulmonary forms of the disease so the histopathology is characterized by a widespread necrosis surrounded by chronic inflammation granulomas and giant cells the east appear as the pilot wheel uh, as uh, large spheri uh, spherical uh, shaped structures with pilot wheel type of budding you can see this pilot wheel type of budding the most common site of infection is lungs Although skin and mucous membranes and lymph nodes are also involved, many patients have mixed type of infection with involvement of different organ system, and the disease is only slowly progressive. Patients with pulmonary lesions present with weight loss and chronic cough, and lesions may be bilateral and nodular on X-ray, and there is often extensive fibrosis. Oral or circum circumoral lesions are common in mucocutaneous forms, and lesions may be localized or diffuse. If in the mouth, a severe, painful, ulcerating stomatitis occur, which is called as the mulberry-like erosions. Lesions on gums lead to loosen and lost teeth. The clinical variant, the hematogenous or lymphatic spread. result in subcutaneous abscesses the cervical lymph nodes are sometimes enlarged early they are palpable painful adherent to the overlying skin and may eventually separate with chronic sinus formation if systemic spread occur spleen intestine lung liver are involved bone lesions have been seen and adrenals may be destroyed cns may also be affected disease course and prognosis untreated the disease is fatal in few months to few years in 43% of the proven cases it is uncommon but does occur in aids patient differential diagnosis the frequency with which the mouth or gums is involved loss of teeth uh, and no central scar formation with marked lymphadenitis and lymphadenopathy differentiates paracoxidiomycosis from blastomycosis other conditions that are considered include tuberculosis syphilis histoplasmosis actinomycosis sporotrichosis rhinoscleroma and leishmania aspiration of pus from lymph nodes will also provide material for microscopic examination and culture investigation pus exudates and scraping examined in qh mounds show rounded refractile cells that is distinguished from blastomyces dermatitis with characteristic multiple small budding the yeast range from 2 to 30 micrometer in diameter the serological test both complement fixation and immunodiffusion assays are useful in diagnosis of this condition antigen detection methods are in development management all form require antifungal therapy first line treatment of choice is itraconazole 200 to 400 mg and produce remission in 3 to 6 months ketoconazole 200 mg daily is an alternate relapse is common and long term surveillance should be carried out some patients particularly with rapidly progressive and extensive infection require amphotericin b 0.5 to 1 mg per kg for 2 weeks followed by oral itraconazole 200 mg orally till the disease is cured now we are going to discuss and very important 
opportunistic or endemic uh, invasive fungal infection that is cryptomycin, cryptococcus. Cryptococcus is acute, subacute, or chronic, caused by cryptococcus neoformans and marked predilection for brain and meninges, although lungs and occasionally skin and other part of body may be involved. The disease occurs throughout the world and condition is not rare and diagnosis is frequently unsuspected. It is particularly associated with AIDS, especially those who are not receiving antiretroviral therapy. The disease usually occurs between 30 to 60 years and is uncommon in childhood. The associated diseases, immunodeficiency states and neoplastic diseases, especially Hodgkin disease. There is predisposition. The predispositions include AIDS, malignant lymphomas, sarcoidosis, collagen disease, carcinoma, and systemic corticosteroid therapy following renal transplantation. The incidence of cryptococcosis in patients with established AIDS is from 3 to 12 percent when antiretroviral therapy was not available. Pathophysiology. The respiratory tract is usual portal of entry, but primary cutaneous lesion may occur in cryptococcosis neoformis which has predilection for invasion to CNS, strains of serotype D are more likely to be found in skin lesions in 10 to 15% of disseminated cryptococcus. So the causative organism is various species of cryptococcus that corresponds previously to serotypes known as A, D, B, and C. So cryptococcus neoformans were uh, group B is the old serotype A. Cryptococcus neoformans getae is serotype B and C. And Cryptococcus neoformans var neoformans is serotype D. Neoformans and group B varieties exist as saprophytes and particularly abundant in soil enriched with pigeon droppings. By contrast, Cryptococcus getae is isolated from leaf and bark debris from red gum trees. Cryptococcus is a basidomycetes, the spore that are produced by sexual phase. Animal, human, or human-human transmission of disease has not been reported. Bird droppings act as excellent culture medium. Inhalation of small yeast forms have been aerosolized is likely to be the main route of infection. This is the histopathology showing dense neutrophilic abscesses, intense mucoid dermal reaction surrounded by granulomatous infiltration. So in addition to the uh, neutrophilic abscesses, there is mucinous infiltrate with granulomatous reaction. There are uh, multiple granulomas and multiple giant cells. And the yeast is in a form of uh, multiple small spheri spherical bodies with thick capsules seen within the histocytes and giant cells. These are demonstrated by mucicarmine stain in which histoplasma and blastomyces is negative. So this mucicarmine is an important stain to differentiate among the other related invasive fungal infections. Methamine silver stain would highlight these particles and their sizes is much bigger than the LT bodies. PA stain also highlight the particles and the budding yeast form is particularly highlighted here. Clinical features, there is no known incubation period. If CNS is involved, it involved in a form of chronic meningitis or, or focal brain lesion simulating a tumor. 
low grade fever and general general decline in health ending in coma and death usually within an year but sometime having a fluctuating course with periods of remission over many many years the pulmonary or urinary tract trichocosis may occur without involvement of cns when the prognosis is believed to be favorable as it is in rare cutaneous forms cutaneous or mucous membrane lesions which occur in 10% and 3% of the cases respectively are seldom pathognomonic and they are usually in form of firm or cystic slow growing subcutaneous erythema nodosum like swellings acneiform papules or pustules occur around nose and mouth direct extension of infection from skin to skin from bone may occur and mucosal lesions are also reported so cryptococcus looks like papules pustules nodules and particularly molluscum contagiosum like papules with central punctum and keloidal lesions also in aids patient manifestation of cryptococcus is not greatly different from those seen in other groups however other symptoms of meningitis are minimal and there is evidence of wide dissemination such as positive blood culture or multiple skin lesions skin lesions are papule with central softening differential diagnosis is histoplasmosis and other fungi like uh, telluromyces the disease has a chronic course and is fatal if untreated investigations large 5 to 15 micrometer budding cells with characteristic capsule are best observed by direct microscopy of csf or pus in india indian ink or nigrosin mounts the colony is soft creamy to pale brown and usually mucoid microscopy yeast alone are formed and no filaments are produced the serological test they are rapid specific and useful particularly in dis- disseminated or cns infection zero diagnosis is dependent on detection of cryptococcal capsular antigen using latex agglutinin test elisa or newly introduced lateral flow device high titer are found in aids in serum and csf management all patients are treated with antifungal drugs the mainstay of treatment in non aids patient is intravenous amphotericin b combined with flu cytosine alternatively less serious patient fluconazole 400 to 600 mg may be used as an alternate to flu cytos in aids patient situation is more complicated the current strategy is to use amphotericin b with or without flu cytosine or fluconazole for 7 to 14 days to induce remission following long term oral maintenance with fluconazole 400 mg per day given as outpatient therapy the use of higher dose of monotherapy with fluconazole 800 to 2000 mg daily is less effective then comes systemic candidosis systemic candidosis is infection of deep organs including the blood stream by candida species in most cases the causal organism originates in patient's own gi tract and patient is with leukemia or other serious illness or a history of mucocutaneous candidiasis in past and is an indication for vigilance and perhaps for prophylaxis with oral anti candida agents invasion of candida along the intravenous infusion lines is also important and maceration of the skin suggestive of cutaneous candidiasis on adjacent skin should not be ignored drug addicts are particularly at risk so the candida is mainly colonizing the gut from there peritonitis or candidemia 
is caused by surgical anastomotic leakage or translocations. And then it affects the bone. It causes infectious pulmonary abscesses. In eyes, it causes end ophthalmitis. It involves the liver, causes splenic abscesses. It involves the kidney with ascending pyelonephritis. And um, in the skin, it forms a biofilm surrounding the infection. The typical skin lesions start as macule, papule, or nodules and may show paler center. Some are likely to be hemorrhagic and may break down to form ecthyma ganglionosum like lesions. Follicular invasion by canida leads to pustules and nodules in the coarse hair bearing areas of scalp, beard, axilla, and pubis may be characteristic of canida septicemia in heroin abusers. Fever, diffuse muscle tenderness, and erythematous macular rash are regarded as indication for prompt skin biopsy in any compromised patients. Investigation. Histology of skin lesions show canida cells in dermis, which provides a rapid diagnosis, often before blood culture is positive. Unfortunately, only a major minority of patients with Canada septicemia manifest skin lesions, but when present, they should not be ignored. Management, the treatment of systemic candidosis is with intravenous amphotericin B, caspofungin, or azole drugs. With fluconazole, isolates of Canada strain should be tested for sensitivity if patients fail to respond. Then the last infection we are going to discuss is the mucormycosis. It is a systemic infection caused by mucormycetes fungi, predominantly belong to the species rhizomucor, uh, lecthemias, and rhizopus. Although they are frequent in the natural environment, they are rare cause of invasive disease in patients, which are made susceptible by poorly controlled diabetes, neutropenia, or renal disease. Fatal infection is reported in patients with burns. The necrotizing infection of the skin is associated with application of dressings contaminated with rhizopus, rhizo. Uh, rhizopodiformis. Mucormycosis occur as an important opportunistic infection in many corona patients which were associated with nose and ear infections. The cutaneous lesions are described in patients with lymphoma and kidney transplant. The lesions are progressive in necrotic ulcers similar to those described under necrotizing fasciitis. Mucormycosis is diagnosed in autopsy or biopsy section based on recognition of broad and generally non-separate hyphae. This is a um, real patient. It is a vegetable fungus. In fact, burns or traumatic wound form ulcerative lesion with prolonged discharge resembling ecthyme. A close-up. Dermis is characterized by mixed granulomatous and suppurative inflammation. And the fungal, uh, fungi are recognized even at lower magnification. These are the fungal hyphae. So the hyphae are very broad, much more than aspergillus, and branch at 90 degree at irregular intervals. The fungi are clearly visible in hemotoxylin eosin state. Silver impregnated stain highlights the fungi. Infections respond to intravenous amphotericin or lipid associated amphotericin B formulations are encouraged. Conclusion regarding treatment of invasive fungal infections. Invasive fungal infections continue to occur 
at an increasing rate with suboptimal treatment response rates. Introduction of several and new antifungals have significantly expanded both prophylaxis and treatment options of invasive fungal infections. While lipid-based formulation of amphotericin BA have significantly reduced the incidence of nephrotoxicity relative to amphotericin B deoxycholate, they do so at significantly increasing increased drug acquisition cost. Expansion of triazole class of compounds to most recently included voriconazole and posaconazole has added significantly to both prevention and treatment of invasive fungal infections, most notably aspargillus with voriconazole. Echinocardins are new, new class of parental antifungals and most frequently used against invasive canidal infections but is used in setting of invasive aspargillosis refractory to alternate therapies. Prototicosis is generally accepted as a genus of achloric algae embracing three species, Wickerhamy, Zopophy, and Stagnora. The first two species are rare and opportunistic pathogens in humans. Lesions are confined to skin and subcutaneous tissue and generally located on exposed sites and may be associated with trauma. Papule, nodule, ulcer, and multiple granulomatous lesions are described. Organisms are found in dermis and epidermis. Management. A spontaneous recovery has occurred in one cutaneous infection. However, surgical excision is recommended for localized lesions and systemic amphotericin B, ketoconazole, and itraconazole have proven effective on occasion. This comes to the end of a very long lecture. I know it was very boring and long, but it was necessary as I want to cover all the intricate details of invasive fungal infection. So thank you all and see you next time with another edition of my lectures. Thank you and have a good day.